This is a Cross and Crown Church production. For other resources, please visit crosscrownchurch.com. Book title, The Kingdom Driven Life. Author, Sunday at Elijah. Published by Cornerstone Publishing. Copyright 2015. Narrated by Jason Garwood. Chapter 6. The Power of the Kingdom. But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountains of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains, and it shall be exalted above the hills, and people shall flow into it. Micah 4.1 God never intended for the church to be disregarded, humiliated, powerless, and without influence, unable to extend the kingdom of God throughout the earth. Before his ascension, Christ promised his disciples that they would receive divine power upon their lives. But ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Acts 1.8 God established the church on the earth as the vehicle to extend his kingdom in the world, filling the earth with his glory and bringing it under his will, the Lordship of Christ. As the light of the world, the church is to extend the kingdom principles of grace and truth and subdue every dark thing to advance the kingdom of God. The lives of the disciples were to be empowered to such an extent that they would be successful in carrying the gospel witness to the ends of the earth. And Jesus' promise to all who believe in him is, The works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. John 14.12 Redeeming the Sphere of Business When it comes to the sphere of business, I normally teach our members that the primary purpose of business as it relates to the kingdom of God is not to make money. Money is only a compensation or reward for our labor. Rather, the purpose of kingdom businesses is twofold. First, God designates people to go into business because he is interested in capturing that particular sphere of business. It is important to always seek the face of the Lord and find out what area of life God desires us to go into. Because the primary burden in the heart of God is to restore all things back to himself, he sends us to those spheres of destiny to bring his glory and principles to replace the darkness there. The second purpose of business is to subdue money and use the ungodly wealth of the world to gain eternal treasure in the kingdom of God. There is a man in my church named Robert. His testimony is a wonderful demonstration of empowerment to do the works of God. Before Robert met Christ, he was owner of several casinos and was influential in the business world of Kiev. He accidentally discovered the location of the theater that Embassy of God was renting shortly after its inception. It seemed ideal for the expansion of his business, and he inquired of the owner how much rent he would have to pay to acquire it to establish another casino. The owner told him that the church was renting it. He had heard that the church was just a small sect or cult, as it was rumored to be, and offered the theater owner more money for the facility than he was currently receiving in rent. He learned later that the owner went to Pastor Adelijah, who was renting the theater, and told him he would have to find another facility for his church because he was going to rent it for more money. Several years later, Robert came to Christ and began to seek God to show him his purpose in life. He took the training classes of our church and then began to pray many nights from midnight to 6 a.m. for direction. However, when he would return to his business during the day, he got so involved in it that he became discouraged in his walk with the Lord. For a year, he kept praying with others many nights from midnight to 6 a.m. The prayer group was wonderful and prophetic words would come to encourage them. Then, the next day, the reality of business would become priority again. After a year of fasting and prayer, God began to talk to Robert about the two things that people seek after if they do not know the Lord, money and health. The Lord began to guide him into a way to captivate people's interest and then present them with the gospel of the kingdom. Robert started a wellness center where people could come to receive free treatments and then listened to wellness lectures that presented principles of the kingdom. For paying customers, there were more benefits available in the wellness center, and in that way they financed the business. He trained his workers to present kingdom principles, 
and they continually added more expertise and equipment to their wellness centers to help restore health to the people. In two years, they have established over 250 centers in more than 20 countries and have ministered to over 3 million people face-to-face, presenting the gospel to them. As pastor of the church in that theater, you might imagine I was very unhappy to be told that we would have to move our fledgling church to another location in order for an unbeliever to use it for a casino. I wrestled before God with that decision and would not relent until I made a deal with God. I said, okay, God, if I have to move this church to give an unbeliever this space, I will do it on one condition, that you save this man and make him a servant of the kingdom. You can see how powerfully God answered my prayer from the above testimony of millions of people hearing the gospel through this businessman's wellness centers. We have not even begun to tap into the power of the kingdom that the church has at its disposal, which will transform cities and nations. Every sphere of life must be influenced by the truth, Christ and the pillar and support of truth, the church. Prophecy of the End Time Church My emphasis on extending the kingdom of God throughout the earth is what Jesus taught and demonstrated in his life and ministry. This focus on the kingdom in no way minimizes or demeans the church, Christ's body on the earth. It only serves to extend the biblical identity of the church and defined its purpose and its goals. Emphasizing the kingdom of God actually clarifies the eternal purpose of God for his church, empowering it to fulfill its holy mandate. God's eternal purpose for the church must be realized in order for his kingdom to come and his will to be done on the earth. And Christ will have a glorious church that is holy and without blemish. It will be a people who are surrendered totally to his will, extending his kingdom on the earth. The Old Testament prophet, Micah, foretold this glorious church in the last days in all its power and glory. But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains, and it shall be exalted above the hills, and people shall flow unto it. And many nations shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, and to the house of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For the law shall go forth of Zion, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Micah chapter 4, verses 1 through 2. I don't think anyone who is familiar with the scriptures would deny that we are living in the last days. It was in the last days that Micah prophesied the mountain of the house of the Lord would be exalted above the hills. Consider for a moment this description of the church as a mountain. What a powerful and majestic metaphor. It is impossible to disregard a mountain, and when you see a mountain that is looming over the hills around it, its majestic presence grabs your attention. Micah was prophetically describing the exaltation of the church in the last days. It is time for the humiliation of the church to end. Before Christ returns, he will make sure the church is no longer disregarded, taunted, and set aside from wielding its divine influence on the earth. In the New Testament, the church is linked to Mount Zion as well. But you have come to Mount Zion, and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, who are registered in heaven, to God, the judge of all, to the spirits of just men made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. Hebrews 12, 22-24 Micah saw the house of the Lord exalted above all the surrounding hills. Since the church, described in the metaphor of a mountain, is an organism of born-again believers, this reference to surrounding hills could represent any other human or political powers on the earth. Consider some of those modern-day hills of society. Wall Street the Pentagon, the liberal media, Congress, Parliament, dictators, false religions. There is a day coming when these surrounding hills will be overshadowed by the exaltation of the house of the Lord. This prospect may seem unreasonable at present, given the powerful influence that Wall Street and other political, educational, religious, and social institutions have at the present over the lives of millions of people, including Christians. 
Where is the power and authority of the church in the face of challenges to the sanctity of marriage between a man and a woman, to the liberty of reading the Bible and praying in our schools, to unborn babies legally murdered through abortion rights, and many other ungodly hills looming over society? Brazen attempts to silence the weakening voice of righteousness of the church are a regular onslaught against the presence of Mount Zion. Yet, in the midst of the overwhelming darkness, God is raising up a people who will believe God and his word, walk in his power and authority, and become the church that transforms the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. God will find believers in every land, in every culture, in every nation who assert the authority given to every believer. With even one individual believer who will read this prophetic word and dare to declare, God Almighty said it, and he watches over his word to perform it. Jeremiah 1.12 God can change a nation. God can bring his word to pass in a day. Understanding the Promise When the prophet Daniel read the prophet Jeremiah, he understood that their captivity was to have ended in 70 years. Yet 70 years had passed, and they were still captives. Why had the captivity not ended in 70 years that it had been prophesied? Daniel set himself to fast and pray for his nation to be delivered when he understood the word of the Lord. Because no one understood the divine decree, no one had laid claim to that promise. They did not believe the word of God over their circumstances that held them captive. God responded to his servant's earnest prayer and sent the angel Gabriel to Daniel to open his understanding of the plan of God for their deliverance. The key to the kingdom that is paramount to walking in divine power on the earth is understanding, which we will discuss. The imminent release from captivity of the children of Israel seemed impossible when viewing their circumstances. But when one man sought God for his promise to be fulfilled, God had to honor his word. It is time for the church to decide whose report to believe. Will we accept the godless philosophies and practices of government, social institutions, and economic powers? Or will we enforce the principles, values, and virtues of the kingdom of God on the earth? Our choice will determine how we walk in the divine power of the kingdom of God. There will be those who dare to agree with the word of God that the mountain of the house of God will be more exalted than any other institution. As they lift up the name of the Lord Jesus, the Spirit of God will begin to descend in power. God will begin to do such miraculous works through the church that all the hills of the world will have to take notice, and Mount Zion will take preeminence over them. My Personal Vision As a young man in Ukraine, I embraced the truth of Micah's prophetic picture of the church. I saw my destiny in the promise that the authority of the church would be more respected than any other institution, no matter how influential. When I began to teach this message of the preeminence of the kingdom a number of years ago, I was reaching a small, ordinary, poor group of people. Yet, I was prophesying, according to the Word of God, what he intended for his church in the entire nation of Ukraine. As God enlarged my understanding of the purpose of the church to release the power of the kingdom, I told God I would pay the price. I surrendered to him to go all the way, do anything required, fast and pray and seek his face so that the church he loves would become the glorious church he ordained it to be. I determined to seek him until the authority of his house would not lag behind any other authority on earth. You probably cannot imagine how despised Africans are in Ukraine. As a black man from Nigeria, I was the least of candidates to establish his glorious church in that land. With the lack of authority the church has today already, it seemed as if God was going to mess it up more by calling me a black man in Ukraine to establish his church. But God is no respecter of persons. He has respect only for faith. Race does not help or hinder the matter. What matters is what a person believes the word of God. If you believe God and want to extend his authority and glory throughout the earth, if you are ready to pay the price of seeking him alone, God will release his power and authority through you. Today, the testimony of more than 25,000 members of the Embassy of God Church reverberates the truth that God has restored the respect for his church throughout the entire nation of Ukraine. 
One sociological poll taken showed that for eight years running, the most respected authority in our nation is the church. That poll compared the church to the president, parliament, media, military, and other influential institutions, the surrounding hills. Mount Zion has prevailed. We are still in the process of exalting the mountain of the Lord over every hill of influence in our nation. We will not stop until we bring the respect of God's kingdom to every sphere of life so that God's name will be glorified. We are going to continue to subdue the earth and make a statement in the political arena, in entertainment and media, education, arts and culture, business and education, in the sports world. As believers understand their destiny and determine to take dominion over their promised land, they will cause their hill of society to bow in respect for God's church. I am preaching this message of the kingdom in America because I believe it is time to restore the glory of the king and the authority of the kingdom back to America. To that end, I am encouraging believers to put their faith in God to do it. It is an insult to live in a country that has professed to be a Christian nation and witness the powerlessness and lack of influence the church is having on society at large. Multitudes of Americans are actually despising the church and have no respect for it. With a large percentage of Americans claiming to be born-again Christians, why should a small number of liberals, homosexuals, and atheists mock the kingdom values promoted by the church and even try to gain ungodly influence within the church itself? In Ukraine, where less than 5% of people are born-again Christians, yet the nation itself has great respect for the church. From top levels of government to educational institutions and business enterprises, to the arena of sports and entertainment, we have made our influence felt. Extending the values and principles and lifestyle of God's love is commanding respect of believers and unbelievers alike. The good that we are bringing to our society as we subdue it to the Lordship of Christ is releasing the power of the kingdom into thousands of lives. Promotion or Persecution I feel the pain of American Christians and the desperate onslaught of darkness they face from political institutions and other ungodly influences that mock the principles of righteousness and taunt the values of the church. Many American Christians wonder where to start to reclaim territory for God and empower the church to regain respect and authority in their society. First, you need to understand that extending the kingdom of God may require you to suffer some persecution. Then you must surrender to God, as I did in Ukraine, to seek Him until He shows you His plan. I feel the pain of American Christians. The first thing I did to gain understanding of how to bring the kingdom of God to Ukraine was to go on a journey into God. I needed to discover Him. I needed to touch the source of His power. I knew if I could find Him, He would explain the way to me. So I preached to my people their need to seek God earnestly. I was seeking Him fervently in prayer and fasting. In His faithfulness, He gave me the master plan for imposing God on the culture, not just in Ukraine, but for any ungodly culture. He showed me how to establish His kingdom principles and enforce the will and purpose of God for a nation. During the past 12 years, we have seen the powerful influence this strategy of extending the kingdom has had in every sphere of life in our nation. Now, even if I left Ukraine, the power mechanism that has been put into place will make it impossible for multitudes to escape the leaven of believing Christians who will exalt the church and its influence in every sphere of life. Taking the Challenge How can you live as a Christian and not wield the power that comes from the influence of kingdom values, principles, and lifestyle on the culture? It is the mandate of every Christian to extend the kingdom of God on the earth. The priority of your life as a believer and the decisions regarding your lifestyle, your career, your relationships, must reflect the glory of Christ in everything you do. Only when you make the kingdom of God your goal, the will of God your passion, and the glory of God your first love, will you discover your personal destiny, the reason you were born. Yet, it seems in America... The mindset in the church is not willing to take the challenge of subduing your community and the nation to the reign and rule of God, working to see His will done on earth as it is in heaven. Everyone seems intent on doing their own thing. There is no understanding of the goal to submit the kingdoms of the earth to God's reign and to the Lordship of Christ. 
Church life is separated from and not relevant to personal vocation, choices, and other lifestyle goals. While the church is expected to meet the needs of a believer and help to make them a better, more Christ-like person, there is little expectation that it should impact the lives of individuals, bringing them into the kingdom and society as a whole by extending throughout society the principles of the kingdom. There seems to be little sense of responsibility among believers for taking the territory where they are laboring and restoring it to the guidance of kingdom principles. And there is less faith that individual believers can have a godly impact on an entire sphere of life that they have been chosen as a vocation. Believers work for a living instead of living for the kingdom purposes, having the expectation that the power of God will transform their community through their influence. Without this conviction, there seems to be little interest or faith for reaching their own nation or the nations of the world with the gospel of the kingdom. In the testimony of Robert mentioned earlier, who owned a successful casino business before he came to Christ, he received understanding through prayer that God wanted to use him to build wellness centers. So he began to build wellness centers all over Ukraine. In three years, he has managed to build over 700 wellness centers and 600 small wellness rooms. The philosophy of his business is to touch as many people as possible with the gospel through love and ministry. These wellness centers provide free diagnosis and free treatment for as many as would like to receive it, providing services and diagnosis and massage, and then offering clients to purchase the health equipment for their homes. At first, the nation couldn't believe this service was real, but very soon, each one of the 700 centers had people lining up from as early as 5 o'clock in the morning to receive treatment before they would go to work. This goes on all day until 7 o'clock in the evening when the center finally closes. The workers of these wellness centers don't just minister physical healing, but also minister what they call total wellness to people by reaching out for physical, mental, and spiritual wellness. When spiritual wholeness is addressed, they share the gospel with their visitors. This is a brilliant way of sharing the gospel without imposing faith on people. Using this strategy of kingdom expansion, there are over 5 million people who have been touched in the first four years of the company's existence. As a result, 5,000 people have joined the church with over 50,000 giving their lives to Christ. As we mentioned, offering additional services and selling health equipment to their clients finances these centers. Many clients prefer to continue private treatment so they can buy health equipment for their homes. As it turns out, these sales are more than enough to cover the entire overhead of the centers and to make a profit for the owners of the business as well. This successful business venture shows the clear advantage of releasing members of your church to take the kingdom message out from behind the four walls of the church and into all spheres of society. It is the understanding of this kingdom message that prompted Robert and his business colleagues to find a means of using their business initiative to bring the redemptive influence of the kingdom into the area of wealth, while also subduing the God of mammon for the profit of God's kingdom. Christians have little expectation of impacting society as a whole. Yet the prophet describes an end-time church that is filled with power in impacting nations. Many nations shall come and say, Come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. Micah 4.2 So dramatic is the impact of Mount Zion, the house of Jacob, that nations declare their need to come to it, to be taught the ways of God, and to walk in his paths. Verse 2. The prophet declares that this end-time revival is a direct result of the law going forth from Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Disappointment in my home country. I remember when I returned to Nigeria after being away from my home country for 20 years. I had heard good reports about a move of God there with many miracles and signs taking place. So I took one of the ministers from my church in Ukraine with me to see what God was doing in my home country. We were there for five weeks. At the end of my fourth week, my companion said he would never come back to Africa. I was stunned. He looked at me and said, I hope you will not follow their example for our church in Ukraine. The gospel you preach is different from what they are preaching here. 
After visiting several African churches, I have not heard one message telling me about how to know God, who He is, and how to learn His ways. Every message is centered on getting your miracle today and being blessed. I just want to know God. In these meetings, we hear about all the promises for the people. I just want to know God. They tell them to bring an offering and it will be blessed. I don't need blessings. I need to discover God. I am hungry to know Him. Don't preach to me about prosperity and healing. Tell me about Him. When that minister returned to Ukraine, he left our church for three years because he was afraid I would change my message and start preaching what my Nigerian brothers were teaching as the gospel. Finally, after all that time, he came back. He was satisfied that the gospel of the kingdom was still being preached in our church. The harvest of nations and the end-time revival is not for egocentric or selfish people who are using God for their benefit. This harvest will be for those who are hungry for God, wanting to learn His ways and to walk in His paths. They will love God, reflect His character, carry His image to the whole earth, surrender to His will, and allow His character to draw people to Himself. There is nothing more attractive than the love of God flowing out of a heart that is totally surrendered to God's will. Manifesting the Power of the Kingdom When the people of God begin to reflect the virtues of the kingdom in their speech and exhibit the passion for the kingdom of God in their actions and priorities, they will restore the earth to the reign of God, individuals to the king, and society to the principles of the kingdom. Out of Zion, that divine authority will begin to come forth with the principles, values, and virtues, the law of God. When the church teaches this gospel of the kingdom, it will equip believers to carry the authority of that kingdom into the society. They will begin extending its righteousness in their personal sphere of influence. And other people will follow them. Men and women who live by principle in business, people will follow. In politics, people will follow. Unlocking the divine power of the principles of the kingdom, honesty, integrity, compassion, generosity, and kindness, People of principle can bring the laws of God to every sphere of life and ultimately lead the world into the knowledge of the ways of the Lord. The glorious day will come that the prophets saw. The day will come when the glory of God covers the earth and people will flow into the church from every tribe and nation. But it won't happen automatically that you wake up and people are flowing into your church from every nation. Some, like Daniel, have to understand the word of the Lord and pay a price to seek God for its fulfillment. They will have to stand and claim this promise for the church to be exalted. If you can pay the price, it will happen for your city and your nation. People of principle can bring the laws of God into every sphere of life. The church will become a mountain established on the top of the mountains and exalted above every other hill. Micah 4, one. The mountain of the house of the Lord in your city, in your nation, will be exalted above any other institution, and many people will flow into it. The Apostle Paul's Source of Power For I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ hath not wrought by me, to make the Gentiles obedient, by word and deed, through mighty signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and round about unto Illyricum I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. Romans 15, 18-19 The Apostle Paul subdued the whole continent of Asia to the Lord by the power of the gospel with signs and wonders. If we are to follow the example of Jesus and his apostles, we must be able to tap into their source of power. When we learn to walk in that divine power, we are able to subject every area to the Lordship of Christ where we are to reign in life. To extend the kingdom of God throughout the earth today, the church must believe that this divine power is capable of giving you authority. In the business world, for example, if that is the sphere of life to which you are called, kingdom principles can prevail. If you are called into the area of sports, know that there is a power in you by which you can take authority and be successful in that arena of sports. Your success will give you a platform to declare the kingdom of God as the source of that success. People listen to those who demonstrate extraordinary success in their field. And when you attribute your success, as the Apostle Paul did, to the power of the Spirit of God working through you, your witness will impact many lives for the kingdom. The power of God is not to lie dormant in you. 
It is not for decoration of you as a person, nor is it to exalt you as if you were the source of the success it gives you in life. The power of God is to be used to subdue the earth for the kingdom of God. It is to take back territories for the Lord Jesus Christ until the heavens and earth echo the word of God that says, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Revelation 11.15 So any gifts and talents that he has entrusted to you are meant to become instruments to conquer the earth, to take authority in that territory, and reflect the glory of the Lord through your life. The scriptures declare that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. That is the divine intent for the earth, to reflect the glory of God. Through Christ's redemption, the earth is to be regained to show forth his glory. As believers, we are commissioned to work to fulfill that assignment. Charisma magazine placed the picture of David Tyree on the cover of an issue. In an article titled, The Game of the Century, David tells how God was involved in his life, and especially in the victory he experienced in the Super Bowl in Glendale, Arizona. Wide receiver for the New York Giants, David Tyree and his team found themselves down 14-10 to 10 with 1 minute and 15 seconds remaining in the game. Here is David's account of what happened next. Eli Manning, the New York Giants quarterback, took the snap, faded back to throw, and somehow escaped a sure tackle by three defenders who were grabbing at his jersey. He got the ball away, lobbing it on a long 32-yard pass. At the other end, I was waiting, an obscure special teams player for the Giants. I jumped, reached high, and caught the ball. I wasn't able to pull it against my body, so I smashed it hard against my helmet and held on. Pass complete. Seconds later, wide receiver Plaxico Burris took another pass from Eli for a touchdown, and the Giants won the game. The new score, 17-14, flashed on the scoreboard. After the game, the media and other professional athletes taunted Tyree's catch as the greatest play of all time. And NFL statistics show that Super Bowl XLII was the most-watched Super Bowl game in the history of the sport. According to David, the greatest blessing for him is the public platform it has given him, who is an unrecognized Giants player, to tell everyone how God helped him to be a winner that day. He is taking this opportunity as a professional athlete, role model, to share his relationship with Christ with everyone who will listen. That is millions of people around the world. Empowered to Fulfill the Great Commission The essence of the Great Commission is to go into all the world and extend the impact of the gospel message, its lifestyle, principles, values, and virtues. God is not talking about your simply mentioning to someone that you love Jesus. He doesn't want you to do your duty to witness to others. Jesus said that he sent us into the world as the Father sent him. And the Apostle Paul described the purpose of our sending to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God, according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Ephesians 3, 10-11 The power the Lord has given us is to be used to perplex and beat down principalities and powers that have had dominion all over the earth. We are to extend the dominion of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. We are to become the answer to the prayer, Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The power of God is available to you to take the will of God and bring His authority to rule the earth. The power of God enables you to suppress opposition and decree the will of God in any sphere of life to which you are called. That is what Jesus did when He walked on the earth. Everywhere he went, he released and demonstrated the power of God, thereby extending the kingdom in that place. Then he commissioned his followers to go and preach the kingdom, heal the sick, and raise the dead. Those signs are simply instruments to extending the kingdom. They are keys that open territories and nations to the truth of the kingdom. Don't pray for power. One of the mistakes I made as a young Christian was to pray for power for signs and wonders. I was so impressed by the men God was using around the world, men of God like Benny Hinn, T.L. and T.L. Osborne, and others who demonstrated the power of God through healings and miracles in their ministries. 
It is possible to become so zealous for the things of the Lord that you can unknowingly do something that is unscriptural to receive them. So I used to pray for power. Father, give me your power. I used to fast to get power. I thought that when I had that supernatural, miracle-working power, it would solve all the problems. But I want to be very clear that to pray for the power of God is unscriptural. I learned from the scriptures that nowhere in the New Testament do the apostles or believers pray for power. Let me explain. When Jesus manifested the power of God, the Pharisees and the people were amazed. But Jesus accused the Pharisees of thinking evil regarding his power. And behold, they brought to him a sick man of the palsy, lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, Be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven thee. And behold, certain of the scribes said within themselves, This man blasphemeth. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? For whether is easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and walk? But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. Then saith he to the sick of the palsy, Arise, take up thy bed, and go into thine house. Matthew 9, 2-6 The Pharisees accused Jesus of blasphemy because he assumed the power to forgive sins. They knew that only God had that power, and they did not accept the divinity of Jesus. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, asked them why they were thinking evil of him. In some Christian circles, my assertion that it is unscriptural to pray for power may be condemned in the same way the Pharisees condemned Jesus. There are many Christians who feel that their problems would all be solved if they could just receive the power of God to conquer them. I preached in another country that that we were not to pray for revival and the leadership there did not receive that message. They tried to correct my theology. But I will show you that it's biblical that for the same reason you do not pray for power, you do not pray for revival to come. You can pray for power and for revival to come for years, and it will not happen. People who have understanding of the ways of God will simply operate in the power of God as they step out to extend the kingdom. In this way, they will bring revival to their land without praying for it. To walk in the power of God is not praying for power that you need. You need to exercise faith in the word of God. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Matthew 28, 18-20 After Jesus declared, It is finished, and after he went to hell and took the keys of hell and death, Revelation 1, 18, he was resurrected from the dead. He said, All power is given unto me in heaven and on earth. He was still on earth when he made that declaration. It was not a declaration of the future. He told his followers that the power of the Lord to do the works that Jesus did is already here on the earth. He did not instruct his disciples to seek for power. He told them to seek the kingdom and his righteousness. He told them he would give them power and go and extend his kingdom across the earth. They had the power that he had been given. They were not to worry about the power to do it. His statement inferred that they would have all the power they needed because it had been given to him if they would obey him and go. When we pray for divine power, we are assuming that we will receive that power from heaven. Jesus said, It has already been given to me on the earth. Your part is to walk in obedience and become a God carrier. Later, the Apostle Paul would describe our source of power as Christ in you, the hope of glory. Colossians 1.27 Power comes through divine revelation. Earlier, when Jesus addressed the Pharisees concerning their evil thoughts, he told them why he had declared the paralyzed man's sins forgiven, that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. Matthew 9.6 Whether it is a question of divine power or a desire for revival or any other question we might present to the Father, the key to receiving an answer lies in spiritual revelation of the ways of God. Jesus was giving more than a healing to a paralyzed man that day. 
He was revealing hidden knowledge of who he was and the power that was resident in him to forgive sin. He wanted people to know that he had brought the power of God to earth. God knows that the problem with people lies in what they know, or perhaps more accurately, what they don't know. Your whole life in the kingdom of God is limited by what you know. The exploits you do are limited by your revelation of God. No man can do more than what he knows. You are limited by your knowledge of the Lord and of the principles of his kingdom. You will never achieve spiritual victories that you do not know are possible. So Jesus was opening the minds of the people by knowledge and revelation. The reason the Pharisees were thinking evil regarding Jesus, accusing him of blasphemy, is that they lacked knowledge of who he was. These religious leaders were sure of what they knew, and Jesus did not fit their code of righteousness. The problem of religiosity around the world is centered in their limitation of the knowledge of the Lord. The prophet Hosea declared that the people of God perish for a lack of knowledge. Hosea 4, 6. The problem with people lies in what they don't know. Ignorance is the only thing in the world that can bring destruction to the psyche of believers. Anything that is messed up in your life by the enemy has been given entrance by ignorance of the power and the love of God. The greatest force that can destroy the people of God is not even Satan. God does not give him so much credibility. But ignorance, the prophet declared, will destroy them. As soon as the people of God came to know the ways of the Lord, they will see a manifestation of the power of God in their lives. The wisest man on earth declared, A wise man is strong, yea, a man of knowledge increaseth strength. Proverbs 24, 5. According to the scriptures, the source of power and strength is understanding and knowledge. There is no need to pray for power. You receive real strength and power in this kingdom through revelation and knowledge of what Christ has provided. Jesus revealed to his disciples that all power had been given to him on the earth. In the strength of that knowledge, they were to obey his word and go and fulfill the great commission. Even during the final instructions Jesus gave to his disciples when he told them to return to Jerusalem until they received the promise of the Father, he simply instructed them to wait. They were not there to pray for power. The promise was that the power would come after the Holy Ghost was poured out, which could not happen initially until the day of Pentecost in the timing of God. Now that Pentecost had come, believers do not even have to wait for the promise. They can receive the power of the Holy Spirit when they enter into the revelation of that promise. Seeking First the Kingdom Again, we are confronted with the priority of seeking first the kingdom. Instead of praying for power or for revival to come, We need to seek to know God. Then we will walk in his power and will bring revival to the earth. We will do revival. Jesus came to earth to reveal the Father, to demonstrate the kingdom of God. He knew that the problem of mankind was not that they lacked power, but that they did not know the source of power. They needed to be brought back into relationship with God. There they would find that all their problems would be solved. Jesus left his power on the earth so that we could fulfill the original assignment of mankind, to take dominion over the earth and fill the earth with his glory. And he clearly revealed the fact that his followers had been given supernatural power to fulfill that assignment. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Luke 10:19. The Greek word behold means to see, not with our eyes, but with your understanding. It is similar to Jesus' explanation to the Pharisees when he said that ye may know. He was earnestly giving them revelation knowledge of the power that he had brought to the earth and was giving to men and women who believed in him. Behold, be aware, understand, realize what I am giving you so that you can use my power to overcome the evil in the world and establish the kingdom of righteousness, peace, and joy. The Apostle Paul prayed for believers to receive this revelation of Christ so that they could walk in the divine power that was at their disposal. Cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling, 
and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us, word, who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. Ephesians 1, 16-20. Do you see the connection? Paul knew that the power was available. He did not ask that they receive power. He was asking that their eyes would be open, that they would know the exceeding greatness of the divine power that Christ's death and resurrection was working in them. He echoed the cry of Jesus, that ye might know and behold. He asked that knowledge would come, that understanding would be opened so that they could walk in victory to fulfill divine destiny. When you have revelation in your spirit, you walk in power. You become aware of the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe according to the working of his mighty power. It is already working in you. Christ in you has unlimited power because it was given to him in heaven and in earth. He is on the earth in you. What you need to operate in power is to know, to realize it is at your disposal. We have limited our effectiveness through lack of knowledge. What I have called my journey into God took the limitations off my mind and spirit and allowed me to view the world as God does, potential territory for establishing his kingdom principles among all people. Believing his word becomes as natural as breathing when our eyes are open through revelation to his greatness and his purpose for our lives as believers. Divine power flows in a supernaturally natural way through a life that is surrendered to the Lordship of Christ and who learns to walk in the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power. Ephesians 1.19 the church of the Almighty God is established to bring glory to God on the earth in every sphere of life. The assignment of the first couple created was to take dominion over the earth and to multiply the glory of God throughout the earth. They were to subdue it to the glory of God to extend the kingdom of heaven throughout the earth. That is still our assignment today. Consider seriously why you are serving the Lord. Why do you go to church? It should be to take a journey into God and to know Him. If that is the case, that knowledge will make you strong in your career, your business, your family, and your influence in society to bring forth restoration to your land and do exploits to the glory of God. That is why you are called. He trusted you. You are the salt and light of the world called to take dominion over your promised land by walking in the divine power of the kingdom. Kingdom Prayer Please pray this prayer with me if you desire to receive divine revelation of the mighty power of God that is working within you. Father, open my eyes to see the exceeding greatness of your power in me that I might know you and do exploits in your name. Don't let me be satisfied with just being fruitful. I want to multiply your glory and subdue my promised land to your kingdom purposes. Now, in Jesus' name, I pronounce upon you the strength of the Lord that is available to those who know the Lord. I release the realization of his power and the understanding to do exploits, to have the eyes of your understanding open to his divine purpose for your life, to understand and be strong. Let the Holy Spirit bring divine revelation to you now that you might walk in his divine power, not allowing it to lie dormant within you, but that you might exercise his power in every area of your life now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Kingdom Principles from Chapter 6 Number 1. God established the church on the earth as the vehicle to extend his kingdom in the world, multiplying the number of kingdom citizens who will fill the earth with his glory. Number 2. Christ will have a glorious church that is holy and without blemish. It will be a people who are surrendered totally to extending his kingdom throughout the earth. Number 3. In the midst of the overwhelming darkness, God is raising up a people who will believe God and His Word and walk in His power and authority. Number four, the power of God is not to lie dormant in you. It is not for decoration of you as a person, nor is it to exalt you as if you were the source of the success it gives you in life. Number five, the power the Lord has given us is to be used to perplex and beat down principalities and powers that have had dominion all over the earth. 
We are to establish the dominion of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Number six, to operate in the power of God, it is not prayer that you need. You need faith in the word of God. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Matthew 28, 18. Number seven, the key to receiving an answer to prayer lies in the spiritual revelation you have of the ways of God. Number eight, when you have revelation in your spirit, you walk in power. You become aware of the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power. Ephesians 1.19 Number 9. Believing his word becomes as natural as breathing when our eyes are opened through revelation to his greatness and his purpose for our lives as believers. And number 10. The assignment of the first couple created was to take dominion over the earth and to multiply the glory of God throughout the earth. That is still our assignment today.